All right, headlines, and I don't think you can get any bigger than the headlines now, these, uh, the two police shootings that we've been talking about. But I want to kind of delve into why these videos now may make some kind of difference. Is it because of the graphic nature of seeing both of these men die? Yeah, I mean, you've got two, two incidents in close proximity with the same kind of circumstances, right? Two people who don't appear to be doing anything wrong who end up dead. Uh, or maybe did uh, something wrong, but not to the, were, were they appear, threatening, right. were, they, right. were they a life threat That's right. to the police officers? Don't seem to be threatening anybody, let alone the police officers who are trying to subdue them. Maybe they're resisting, uh, in the case of the Alton Sperling shooting in, in Louisiana, but, but certainly not to the point where you would think, I've got to shoot this, this person. So you've got these two incidents in close proximity on camera where you actually see the people die. I mean, you actually can watch them die. Have you ever is, seen anything like that? I, I, watching the, Spur, the Sterling video, I thought to myself, I have never watched someone die this way. I mean, you see him, uh, after they shoot him, you see the blood spread across his chest. You see his hands and arms quaking. And then, mm -hmm. uh, uh, you know, it's just, uh, it is really it's hard. Staggering. It's hard to yeah. watch. Um, you know, does that become this moment? And it's a little different from some of the other videos we've seen of this, right? Uh, uh, Eric Garner, we saw choked to death on a, a sidewalk in New York. Right. Um, uh, we saw a shooting uh, in, in, some other, in some other cases, and we've heard about this, but these seem different in the, in the sort of garish nature do you of think, the violence. Do you think the conversation now um, that people, if they are on scenes like this or they are in a situation like this, the first thing that they do is think of the video that this is something that you need to see to actually believe? Yeah, I mean, it's, it, it really is not... There's nothing like that, right? There's nothing that you can say, well, I can understand, I can put this in some sort of context that makes it reasonable or makes it acceptable. This is, this is really uh, uh, aggressive behavior, an escalating behavior on the part of police whose job is to de-escalate situations, is to, is to prevent them from getting to the place where somebody's life has to be taken. And we know that there are so many police officers that do their jobs and do their jobs well sure. every single day. One thing that struck me as I'm reading about both of these cases, so in, in Louisiana and now in Minnesota, is that you had young officers. So in Louisiana, you had officers, uh, one was four years on the force, one was three years with the department, and in yeah. Minnesota, um, the officer was five years with the department. And, and it struck me that we've had these conversations now over the last four or five years that there would be some kind of training that you might not expect that from a younger officer who might have maybe a little bit more sensitivity training or are you just saying maybe going by the inexperience that this is yeah well i think there are two things that that make that difficult one is uh you know once you give someone a gun and tell them that that uh, their job is to keep the peace and that they may have to take life to do it there need to be there need to be sensibilities that that go along with that that the training has to, to to sort of insist on and i think that's harder and harder with people who have less and less experience. I mean, the more you do it, I think the more comfortable you, you become with it. But yeah. the, other, the other aggravating issue here is race. I mean, you, you have uh, a lot of people on police forces who believe that black men are a threat, are an inherent threat, whether they're doing anything or not, and believe that there's some sort of super strength uh, that we possess that, that requires this, uh, you know, over-the-top physical response. In the Sterling shooting, you see this sort of uh, struggle that they're having with him, and you see, you the see fear two officers on, on him. their faces. And he did have a gun, and we saw in the, the one gun video in his pocket, was pulled. But was, the the gun was pulled out afterwards. Um, I, you know, I want to move to uh, uh, Hillary Clinton and the emails. And while she escaped indictment this week, um, she surely <laughs> did not political storm escape going. exactly the political storm. I mean, FBI saying she was extremely careless. She should have known to not have classified information on personal servers. Um, is that politically enough? for people to say, wow, she's got terrible judgment. Well, I mean, I think there's no question she had terrible judgment in doing it. And she said, I would never do it that way again. I don't know if that's enough to convince voters in the abstract or in the, in the absolute, but certainly in the, in the context of the choice that people are being asked to make now, I'm not sure it matters. Yeah, but can't uh, the Republicans just say, hey, if you don't, um, if you don't take our word for it, just look at the head of the FBI, this is what he said, and use his words yeah. over and over and over again. Right, but what are they offering as an alternative? I mean, somebody who 
uh, is not qualified to do any of the jobs uh, where you would have that level of security clearance whose who's intemperate sort of uh, utterances and other things are really getting him into more and more trouble. I think this is a, a case where the, the argument that if the Republicans had a more mainstream candidate to get behind that that would uh, make a, a bigger dent this might into make it. a bigger yeah. this might make a bigger difference in in the election uh, so maybe that I don't know that, you're seeing some pretty close polls right now too I mean it, you know the numbers so, are maybe a little closer than you would right. think they would be you're seeing some close polls but what you're really seeing if you look beneath the surface 538 Nate Silver uh, has his election projections out. Uh, well, Nate's uh, been wrong before. Come no, he on actually now. hasn't. I mean, <laughs> he hasn't been wrong in a presidential election. And when you look at the, the, the gaps that he has, and in the states where he has those gaps, uh, how far is he off the McCain or even the yeah. Romney numbers? Uh, to, to trying to beat Barack Obama, I, this is not this is not a particularly winnable situation. For Donald Trump, and you're going to see polls that that show different, you know, that show tightening some, or, some, or yeah, some different numbers. Overall, uh, he's got very, very we'll deep see. trouble. It's going to be an interesting summer.